When our daughter was three, we took her to her yearly pediatrician's appointment. She still wasn't up to where we thought she should be for speech. We thought that we should probably get that looked at. They gave us a referral to have her language tested further with a speech pathologist because we all thought that she might be a little bit behind where she was supposed to be. Parents come to me as a teacher with speech and language concerns. You know, arm is my child saying the appropriate sounds that they should be at their current age level. She was diagnosed with mixed expressive receptive disorder, meaning she had problems taking in language and also putting language out. The earlier we can recognize and qualify a student for services, the earlier those services start, the more success we have with them. They're more likely to exit services. Early intervention, the research shows that it makes a huge difference on a child with their education. When we talk about early warning signs or red flags for developmental disabilities, what we're really looking at is across the developmental domains. So that includes hearing, that includes vision, that includes motor, and that means both fine motor and gross motor. It means cognitive, it means communication, it means social emotional. So when we see any delays in those areas that are different than what we would expect from preschoolers who are developing more typically, that becomes a red flag or a concern. Examples might be not being able to put a full sentence together or respond to questions, not being able to follow two-step or three-step directions, having difficulty with uh, toys or puzzles that might be a bit more challenging. Are they communicating appropriately? Are they able to get their needs and wants met within the classroom? I also look at what can they do within our skill set. So we, our early standards that we kind of look at are colors, shapes, numbers, the letters of their name. Have they been exposed to Play-Doh? We're finding more and more are not using like Play-Doh, scissors, crayons. They've never held those before. So we try and check to see is it exposure or is it something that they really don't have the skill set to maneuver them. A lot of times parents will come to us and they'll say that this is in excess of what they see other uh, children doing. So if I'm the parent that has a concern about my child, I want to reach out to somebody. There are a variety of people that they can reach out to. Parents can reach out to their physician, their child's pediatrician, and ask their pediatrician, you know, I'm concerned about this. And pediatricians do actually, during well-child visits, will look at developmental milestones and ask the parent, are there any concerns? There's a whole process across the country, and certainly in Ohio for Child Find, where you can reach out to a local school system, you can reach out to Help Me Grow in Ohio. They will have testing sites where you can bring your child there and in a friendly, play-based type of setting, be able to check to see, are there red flags, are there concerns? Now from that initial referral, then there's a determination made as to whether or not there needs to be a full assessment. For being a speech therapist, I go into the classrooms, we assess children that are having trouble articulating, kids who have fo trouble following directions or language issues, vocabulary. We do intervention when necessary, and if we suspect there's a disability, we move forward with testing, contact the parents. We meet with the families and say, yes, your child does qualify, no, your child doesn't qualify, and that's called the evaluation team report or an ETR. And that's where we work on the IEP, which is the individualized education plan. We say, these are your student skills, this is what we need to work on, this is how we're going to meet those needs. We're definitely very glad that we had her tested. She would have gone an entire year without services and we don't really know how much further behind she would have ended up being if we hadn't had her checked when she was. My advice to any parent out there who thinks that their child might have a problem would be it's not your fault and get them assessed so that they can get the help that they actually need.